Bruno, and that's about. Hey, Saint George. Nice to see you. What have you got for me today? Uh, Supercharged M3. Tasty. Yeah. Horse powers. Well, um, it should be with a half bar of boost. It's running at the moment slightly over. Uh, it should be around 470 brake. So out the factory, what did these originally come with? 340. This is quite a big step up from where it was. Yeah, but like it's it still is only at 3.2. Uh, now the difference is we, we built it, uh, lower compression pistons, not by much, it's only 10, so it's ideal for supercharging. So it's still pretty responsive. Um, yeah, and uh, forged rods, ARP bolts, the, the basics yeah, for a, new, new a boosted engine, yeah, it yeah. was full rebuilt. Standard cams? Yeah, standard cams. Uh, you can play with the Vanus, as, as I've done already, this is on standalone ECU, because we were really struggling to get it to run to the point we were happy with on the yeah, standard ECU. Standard so we just decided to go standalone. And we, what, what ECU is it? It's a ECU Master, um, which is the same I'm using on my new build, uh, ECU Master Black. So it's very decent. On this one, we're still uh, coding the um, CAN buzz. Like it's not fully done yet, the CAN buzz coding. That's why like there's some lights on under that. Yeah. It's because that's not everything is working spot on. Should we have a quick look under the engine bay? Yeah, yeah. And so not hundred percent finished yet. We still have a few things to do. We're going to redo the intake plenum. Oh yeah, tasty. And what what supercharger is that? It's a uh, Rotrex, the C90 slash or three. So which is the biggest one they do. Um, so it's very very capable. So at the moment it's only asleep <laughs> <laughs> with the amount of boost yeah, it's doing. Focal boost, yeah. Yeah, like uh, it can take a lot more. We're going to go for next. Uh, better shape plenum to be more efficient and to get a few more ponies out of that as well. Yeah. And this is all your custom custom plenum? Yeah, but this was like done on the early days, like when I first started doing things like this. So yeah, before you advanced. Before I moved on <laughs> and started studying. It's still efficient, it works quite well, but I don't think it's it's that great. I can do a much greater design. Better job, yeah. yeah it's like you learn as you go, like this was four or five years ago, and then you go and you learn, Progr you learn, you progress all the yeah. time, you see, it's, it's called evolution. Yeah, cool. The customer bought this as a supercharger kit, however the supercharger came on it was ruined and uh, on the beginning uh, we we had it supercharged on the standard, completely standard internals and the car was not all that, you know, it was slightly over 400 bhp with the same amount of boost it has now. but it felt completely <laughs> different from what it yeah. feels now. We've done as well the, um, a custom intake for it. Everything has to be done custom because they were, it was not like a kit, as yeah. I said, like you buy off the shelf. The only thing that we bought made <laughs> was the bracket that actually holds the supercharger. Super yeah. All the rest we had to do, all the feed lines, everything, like the intercooler piping is all solid. The feed pipe that goes across from the supercharger to the air filter right on the back. It gets air from there because it comes from yeah, that area. Yeah, I was going to say, because the filter is kind of right snuck at the back, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, it's a supercharged engine, it will suck it in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the greatest place, but then there's the intercooler to do the job of cooling down the, yeah, the air. And this there. is quite a decent size intercooler. And obviously, this is S54 engine? Yeah, S54 V32. And then what's the complications with sort of mapping with individual throttle bodies? I'll tell you something. The thing I found the hardest was to adjust the fly-by-wire, like the sensitivity of the pedal. It's very hard because, like, it's and it's not. I'm not still hundred percent happy with it because, is like, you're saying it, it's a bit on and off. It is, but then you can dial it off on the mapping, uh, which you're already done. So now the car is drivable because on the beginning, because it was too sensitive, because the scaling you cannot scale like ten percent of throttle cannot be ten percent on the throttle bodies because it, <laughs> it takes a lot of air in yeah, makes sense. because they are very big as well did you map it yourself yeah you did I, I just finished like yesterday like this is what i believe it's it's like 90 percent done there still has some areas that i want to work out but we went already through two tanks of fuel on it <laughs> <laughs> i took it yesterday for a drive um and all I've done, plugged laptop in and just done a log of the drive. 
then I got here this morning, I spent an hour looking at the full log, seeing the points that needed to be readjusting, seeing the knocking, like the ignition values, boost values, fuel values, to make sure like I could make it, trim all that down and make it smooth, and I still want the car to be reliable. Yeah, like, got you. We don't want the car to lose any real, really reliability. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Especially when John's driving it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've done other things on the car as well. These are common to crack on the rear. Yeah, on the rear, most on the subframe. Yeah. yeah. This one we done the full reinforcement on the on the back of the car. The subframe was fully reinforced, and this one we caught it on time because it was cracking already. There was a place that was already quite badly, so we had to redo all the flooring. Everything has to come out. Most people that know about these cars know the job. What yeah, involves? It's, it's a major, major. It's job. a major job. Yeah. yeah. And while we were there, we replaced all the brake lines because they are common to corrode. So we just put copper lines all around with braided houses Stainless all around. Steel, as well. yeah, nice. yeah. So everything is done. So now it it will last longer than the standard is like. Uh, and what about the brakes on this? Are they stock stock uh, brakes? No, no. We've done the conversion. We do them. We used to do them on these thirty sixes. We do them as well on the forty sixes. We use a four pot Brembo caliper on the the M three size disc. They come off the Evo seven. Okay. Um, so I modify the hubs to fit. So there's no spaces. There's nothing. It's just direct bolt on. It's like it's a factory. Yeah. Um, fit suspension. Suspension, it has HSD dual tax, which okay. uh, I found because it's a road car. I found it's it's enough. You don't need a lot more than that. It works well. It's already adjustable. Yeah, you can play with it up and down. You know, and, I the, and these do, to be fair, handle pretty pretty sweet. Yeah, out the, of the, the chassis, the chassis on them is very good. Yeah. and even the standard suspension is really nice. It's yeah. like many people put bath coil overs on them. That yeah. I've seen a few. It makes before. them a bit crashy. Yeah, and like you just ruin the car. The car yeah. loses the ability of being as quick. The car needs to put the power down, so the rear has to be fairly soft. soft yeah. So it uh, squats and uh, it gets the grip, and even still, it's very hard to get. Yeah. <laughs> the power down. And what what tires what tires we running all around, today, uh, Bruno? P uh, Pirelli P Zero Nero. Uh, we got two seven five thirty nineteen on the back. Okay, so quite a decent size. Yeah, and, and on, on the front, front we got two four five. Two four five. Right. Yeah, it still feels like it's on plastic tires <laughs> sometimes. Then the weather. Doesn't help the fact it's a bit grey and miserable and cold. Yeah, but it's like it's not going to be great. So. No, we can we can make do. The audience is going to love it regardless. Yeah. Gearbox is standard. Standard gearbox. They are known to cope with quite a lot of pretty torque strong. And power. Yeah. yeah, we actually yeah, use them in the drift world, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other thing is the advantage of having a turbo, uh, not a turbocharged, a supercharged engine, is the power delivery is so linear and the 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 way the road tracks builds the boost is very very gradual so you don't have any yeah like any a big surge of power yeah, yeah there's no impact it's always builds up and builds up even the standard clutch is coping quite well to be honest it makes it a bit more drivable when you've got yeah. like six, six seven hundred horsepower and it comes in in between like you know you've got three thousand rpm bands to play yeah. with yeah, no this, this is different like we're keeping the boost as it is now like uh, the engine was built to cope with the one and a half bar but uh, we rather for now leave it like Keep this. It a bit safer. Like the the customer has to get used to it. Yeah. And like if <laughs> he just goes from three hundred brake to seven hundred, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a jump. Slight, yeah. Um, and like um, it's uh, well, um, I I was very impressed with it yeah. when I tried it properly yesterday. So cool. it's just it's very linear. But like when you it's only when you look at the speed or you feel how quick, how quick the car is. Yeah. Because it's so linear, you just feel never stops accelerating all the way to the rev limit getting me you're getting me excited man should we, should we go and try it out <laughs> let's go yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
conditions are <laughs> slippery today. <laughs> <laughs> It does move, doesn't it, man? That's only 0.5 bar. <laughs> Fucking hell. What's it going to be like at 1.5 bar? <laughs> Dangerous, know. man. Drivability is actually pretty decent, to be fair. Like you said, know, we're sort of off boost now and it's pretty it. smooth. Yeah, I get what you're saying, man. This is an M3 at the end of the day. It's quite yeah. an expensive car. You don't want to lose that. It's kind of refi yeah. refinedness, yeah, I guess it you is. call it's, it. It's, it's a nice car. It's yeah. We're cruising at the moment in sixth gear. We're doing 30 miles an hour. Yeah. But it's drivable. Still drivable. Yeah. That's the thing I wanted to make sure I could get it as well. And what, uh, what diffs, is it still got the stock LSD at the back? Stock. All stock? Have you done stuff like, like new bushes and stuff like yes, all around the car? Yes, everything was and... done when, uh, when we've done the reinforcement ah, okay. on, the, on the rear. So... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sick man. Yeah, with loads of boost, yeah, man. When it start running like one bar, it's gonna sound fucking nuts. At one bar, this should do around 630, 640 brake. Really? Fuck me, man. It's gonna be a different different animal, that. We set the scale to one bar, but because the result was so good at this boost, I'm just going to leave it for now. I wasn't actually meant to be doing any videos until the 3rd of January. I was having a little bit of a sabbatical. Well, I came out the farm today it and happened. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> Bruno was there, it was like, I've got a 500 brake M3, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll get my camera. And what we're going to do next, we've got something else coming up, which is a little bit different actually. It might not completely be your normal cup of tea. Completely different. Yeah, thing. very different car, isn't it? Which is a Boxster. Yeah, Porsche, Porsche Coxster. No, I can't call it that. No, it's a Boxster. Boxster. Boxster S. <laughs> That's what Jeremy Clarkson calls it, man. What year is this car? Do you know, Bruno? 2003, I think. 2003. That's quite. Um, is that, when did they come out these? 02, didn't they? 2001. Oh, 2001. Is it Alpine White? It's a wrap. Is it wrapped? It's wrapped. Oh, it's sprayed. Yeah. Oh, it's been sprayed. Oh, fair play. And these did actually originally come in white, but back then they were very, very uncommon, very, weren't they? Very rare. Yeah. I think at the time people didn't want them. White wasn't popular colour back then, was it? Yeah. Now it's sort of really, every other fucking car is white, isn't it? And these have sort of come round now, these cars. I mean, like, they were sort of really going, the bottom of the lot, the bottom feeders were going for about sort of six grand. Now yeah, the price has really gone up, haven't they? I mean, good. what are you looking at? Ten grand for one of these, realistically, for a, a decent one. Decent you spend one, at least grand. ten grand. Yeah. yeah. If you want a super clean one, you can pay up to twenty grand for it. If you buy one that needs work, you pay eight grand. Yeah. If you get a bit of a ropey, yeah. bit of a ropey one. <laughs> Pretty much wraps up this cheeky, cheeky little review. Your social media, BDS Performance, BDS, BDS underscore. underscore Performance. I'll chuck a little thing in here if you guys want to give Bruno a cheeky little follow. We're going to be doing a lot more car reviews for 2019. So yeah, if you guys want to get your car on the channel, we're doing talking and non-talking POV stuff. So if you want to get your car on the channel, feel free to give me a shout. And see you soon. Hey. Hey. Hey!